In breaking news, most of the world does not use the United States dollar. Many countries use currency in colors other than green and black. More on U.S. tax rules on converting this foreign currency after this. Everything for U.S. tax must ultimately be converted to U.S. dollars, regardless of the original currency. This video covers the U.S. tax rules for getting from a colorful currency to dollars. Here's what we'll cover. Let's start with an overview of some of the basic concepts. We'll cover most of these concepts in a lot more detail. Most of the rules covered apply for both U.S. tax and U.S. generally accepted accounting principles, or GAAP. But sometimes the terms used differ. Foreign currency is property, not money, under U.S. tax rules. Rules for acquiring or disposing of it are based on the rules for property. See Chapter 13 of my book, Income Tax in the USA, for more on property transactions. An exchange rate is the rate at which one currency is converted to another. These rates change. Unfortunately for us mere mortals, central banks and the financial press report these exchange rates in two different ways. Sometimes, you just have to know which way they're talking about because they don't tell you. The rate may be units of foreign currency per U.S. dollar. This is used in reporting the Japanese yen and some others. Or the rate may be dollars per unit of foreign currency. This is used for the euro and the pound. If you do business internationally, it would be a mess if you tried to determine your income or expenses tracking each currency you used. Transactions may be incurred in many currencies, but before they're recorded, they must be converted into a single currency called the functional currency. For book purposes, this process is called measuring or remeasuring. Functional currency means the currency used for an individual or entity, or a qualified business unit of that individual or entity, for most of its dealings. Books should be kept in this functional currency. There's more coming up about how to determine which currency is the functional currency. Qualified business unit, or QBU, is a tax term but the same concept applies for GAAP. It is a separate activity for which separate books are kept. This could be a branch of a company, an office in a different country, or just a set of activities that use the same currency. The only formality for any operation to be a QBU is that it must have separate books. Exchange rates fluctuate, sometimes rapidly or a lot. If you hold units of one currency, the value of those units in another currency changes. For U.S. tax, gain or loss is recognized only when some transaction happens involving that currency. Transactions that cause this recognition of foreign exchange gain or loss includes selling units of a currency other than the functional currency, collecting accrued income, paying accrued expenses, or otherwise settling a receivable or payable. Book and tax rules differ primarily as to the timing of recognition of this gain or loss. For book purposes, 
gain or loss on unsettled transactions is recognized at year end as if the asset or liability were settled, then recomputed when the transaction settling it happens. Currencies, just like stocks and bonds, are widely traded, both by dealers and by many banks. You can buy currency for delivery right now through most banks. That is called a current contract. The bank may not have the paper money, but they can sure make a wire transfer for you. For a fee, of course. The typical rate for current contracts is about equal to the one you see quoted real-time online, but your bank can use any rate as long as you both agree. Some exchange rates are controlled by the government issuing one of the currencies. This can lead to differences in quoted rates and street rates. You can also agree with a bank or currency dealer to exchange currency at a later date. For example, I can agree with my bank to sell me UK pounds next week and we can agree on an exchange rate for a specific amount at a specific time. Businesses use such forward contracts to hedge their currency exposure for amounts they expect to pay or receive in the future. In addition, many banks, dealers, and brokerages offer a security payable at a future date in the equivalent of a particular currency at that date. Such contracts are called foreign currency futures. See Chapter 14 of my book, Income Tax in the USA, for more on securities.